Mary Toft, a 25-year-old English woman from Goldoming, Surrey. She was married to Joshua, a journeyman tailor, and the couple had three kids. When she became pregnant once more in 1726, she was forced to continue working in the fields because she was a peasant. Early in her pregnancy in August of that year, she complained of very painful complications, and it's thought that she was having issues because her placenta was growing abnormally at the time. This would have stopped the embryo's growth and regrettably resulted in a miscarriage. She gave birth to something that appeared to be made of animal parts, though, on September 27th of that year. She called over to her neighbor, and the neighbor stopped by and observed as she produced multiple various animal parts. The next day, this neighbor showed the pieces to her mother and Toft, who also just so happened to be a midwife. John Howard, a local obstetrician, was then contacted to conduct an investigation. He didn't think the story was true, and after doing a lot of research, he concluded that nothing of the sort could have happened. And then he assisted Toft in delivering three cat legs and one rabbit leg the next day, much to his horror and shock. She gave birth to numerous baby rabbits in the days that followed, the majority of which were no longer alive, but a few of which were hopping around. Howard, who was perplexed by all this, wrote to medical professionals in London outlining all the circumstances surrounding the birth of the 12th baby rabbit. When word of the miraculous births reached King George, it didn't take long for him to act on it. The king was curious, so he dispatched his personal surgeon, Nathaniel St. Andrew to look into it. And while there, Mary Toff gave birth to rabbit number 15 on the day that he arrived. Surprisingly, despite the fact that Toff showed no signs of pregnancy, both St. Andre and John Howard genuinely believed that she was giving birth to rabbits. They assumed that the reason that she was giving birth to baby bunnies was because she had been startled by a rabbit while expecting. The name of this is called maternal impression. It's a very complicated myth, rooting to beliefs back in the day. It was the idea of a maternal impression, and it's based on the concept that a strong mental influence acting on the mother's mind could leave an impression on the unborn child, either general or specific. And as a result, one could say that the child has been marked. However, not everyone agreed with it. After research, it was determined that Toff's womb was not a place where the rabbit's lungs could have formed. Additionally, a dead bunny's droppings, which contained hay and straw, were discovered by a doctor. And even worse, someone discovered the rabbit had been surgically split in half. Nevertheless, St. Andre brought Toff to London for a more thorough examination because he was convinced she was giving birth to baby bunnies. Toff's arrival caused a huge stir in the community. Major newspapers covered the mother's story as crowds of people flocked to see her. Toff, however, stopped having these baby bunnies once she arrived in London. A little less than a week later, on December 4th, the hoax was officially uncovered. A housekeeper was discovered sneaking a rabbit into her room. Toft admitted it was all a lie after doctors said they needed to operate on her to further assist. And in order to continue the hoax, it was found that Toft's husband Joshua had been purchasing young rabbits while her sister-in-law was paying servants to deliver the animals to her. She admitted that after her miscarriage, a friend assisted her in concocting this entire hoax. And additionally, they concocted a tale in which Toff claimed that she had developed an obsession with the rabbits. And as a result of being startled by one while she was pregnant, working in the field, it left this mental impression. But that story was a complete lie. In the end, she was released April of 1727. She was not given a specific legal charge to answer to. The hoax didn't bring any money for the Toft family, and Mary Toft moved back to Surrey. As time passed by, she gave birth to a daughter named Elizabeth in February of 1728. This was listed as her, quote, first child after her pretended rabbit breeding, end quote, in the local parish register. These are interesting things with J.C.